I know that Venom of Asbury Pi video, I've been getting asked questions of how to make the thing operate in composite mode for those that don't have an HDMI monitor. And yes, it does have a composite output, you just have to switch it on, and there's a procedure to do that. And you also, of course, need a special cable to connect it up. I'll show you how to do it right now. I was asked after my Raspberry Pi 3 demo video where I connected it up to my flat panel TV, how to hook these up to a conventional analog TV either a CRT TV or could even be an old plasma or something that doesn't have an HDMI input or a projection TV that only has composite and component. And you can, there is a composite output on here. It's fed through the multi-connector and what you need is you need one of these breakout cables. But as I'll show you, there are two different types of breakout cables that are available, uh, maybe more, and they're wired differently. So I'm going to take a look at these two different cables to show you the difference. One of these should work, actually both of these should work, but the, the, uh, the colors may be different, but they may not. They may not both work. It all depends on how this jack is wired. This is a Sony connector that came from the camcorder era when Sony went to the single multi-connector 3.5mm plug on some of their camcorders to make them a little smaller. Here's how Sony wired theirs. So I've got the meter in diode test mode so it's going to beep when I've got continuity. If we look at the white wire for example, the white connector, we will see that the white connector goes to which one? The tip, the very tip. Which is normal because most um, stereo plugs, the white would be left and it would be the, the tip. And ring would be the right channel and ground would be the main the ground shield. So let's go to the red terminal now. And we'll see that on the Sony, the red is actually down here. Way down at the bottom. So where is the yellow one going to be? Is the yellow going to be the second or the third? I'm going to guess that the yellow is going to be the third ring. The second one down from the top. Which it is. I'm having a tough time making a connection and hold this thing at the same time. But the, the, the second one down from the tip, the first ring, is the video connector. So the second ring down here, this one is going to be the common ground, which it is, okay? That's how Sony's is. Sony, it's white, yellow, ground, and red. So here's a little chart I made. Tip, ring one, ring two, and ring three. Here's our Sony. Let's look at another connector. This one came with a Samsung TV for the AV input because they've gotten rid of the uh, standard AV inputs on TVs now and they typically come with a dongle cable like this which gives you video and audio and then a second one that's that's got the... Uh, actually no, this one didn't come with a Samsung because the ones that come with a TV typically this would be a shared uh, component cable. It would have It would be yellow and green because it would it will double as the green. So this is just another one that's wired differently because there are multiple ways of wiring it. The Samsung one's probably wired different yet again. We'll have to uh, go and check that out and see how it's wired. I've got one kicking around here somewhere and it's it's a double. It's got a green on it as well. Let's look at this one here. But again, you can figure this out by means of using your uh, multimeter and we'll figure out what is what. So on this one, if I go to the, the tip, it is not the white. You see, the white wire is not the tip. Which one is the tip? Is it the yellow wire on this one? Yes, the yellow wire is the tip. So on this other, other, I'll call it other because uh, um, I don't know what brand it is, but the, the uh, tip is yellow. And ring number one is, is it white or is it red? 
ring number one is red or yellow. Did I say yellow? Yellow. Yeah. Or white. White. So ring one is white and ring two is red. And ground is, of course, ring three. Now, obviously, only one of these is going to work with the Raspberry Pi. And the reason I say that is because if the R3 is ground, that's a common ground for all of them. And, of course, on this one, the ring three is connected to the red and the ground is connected to ring number two. So we have to determine what does the Raspberry Pi use as its connector. I'll just disconnect the power from this so we can determine what way the Raspberry Pi is wired. We can figure it out really easy. If I plug in a dongle cable, ground should be ground no matter what. So if I plug in this one and I measure between ground and the shield, Aha! I don't have continuity. So let's plug this one in and measure between ground and... Aha! Aha! So, what this tells me is that the Raspberry Pi follows the standard, and I believe Sony's is the standard. This is, this is the more common way of doing it. This one's a two-channel breakout box or breakout cable or an adapter. As we'll see, our shield is common to both of these two and our white wire goes to the tip and our ring goes to the red. Now remember I said that R3, ring 3, is the video output for the Pi, which is the one that's closest to the end of the connector, the, the base of the connector then ground, and then uh, ring one and, and tip are the two audio outputs. So on the Sony cable, the ring three corresponds to the red, not the yellow. So I've got the red connector connected to the video input on the TV. I have to trick this unit into going into um, composite mode because by default, it's set up for HDMI. So what I do is I'm gonna turn on the power. I'm gonna wait approximately 15 seconds and then I'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard and I'm going to give it a few seconds because a menu is going to pop up on the HDMI which we can't see and then I'm going to hit the 4 key to select composite video. Um, the, the 4, well, we'll go through that in a minute but I'm just waiting for it now. Okay, I'm going to hold down the shift. I'm going to hit 4. I'll do it again with the HDMI monitor connected as well so you can see the sequence that happens because you'll have no video when this initially happens if you don't have an HDMI monitor. So if you have an HDMI monitor, it's easy because you can watch the screen, watch until it says press the shift, but if, if you don't, it's going to wait about 15 seconds. And you hold the shift key and now hit the 4 key. And that'll switch it to the other monitor just like this. So here's no HDMI monitor. I'm going to turn on my account to 15 and then I'm going to hit the shift key. So one, two. Now 15, I'm going to hold down the shift key for a few seconds and release it. Give it a second for that other screen to come up and then I'm going to hit four. Aha. Hit three if you want PAL, hit four if you want NTSC. So that's the procedure to get the video switched on. And then I wanna just, uh, I wanna make this setting permanent, I select yes. So now when I reboot the unit, if I turn it off and turn it back on, it should boot up automatically in that mode once it boots. There you go. And then if I want to boot Raspbian, I can just boot Raspbian here. And that will boot up Raspbian and I can then surf 
on a CRT monitor and anything I do should work on a CRT monitor once it boots up. And there we have the Raspberry Pi desktop. I got a little bit of overscan on my TV. I'm just going to go into the settings here and see if I can turn those off. So I'm going down to preferences here. And uh, where's my preferences? Raspberry Pi configuration. And uh, network here. We'll turn off the uh, overscan. Disable. Okay. I'll just reboot this um, and we'll go down to off preferences shut down we'll reboot it and uh, hopefully that'll turn off the overscan so that I'll fit more on my screen see the real beauty of the these Raspberry Pis when they were designed they were designed going back to the first generation they were designed as a charity to provide low-cost cheap computers for students that could be given to every student and not everybody had the money to buy a new TV so they had to make them compatible with existing equipment that's out there so if I load up my web browser for example on my CRT TV now running Raspbian probably not going to look very good but let's uh, let's go to YouTube And I hate this mouse. I just despise this mouse I'm using. It's terrible. I don't want to search. Oh, look, look at that. I'm second from the top. Oh yeah, <laughs> how to dispute a fake copyright claim on YouTube? That's one I put up today because I got uh, I got a fake claim, and uh, you know these ones here just kind of tick me off when I get these. But here we go. This is the only thing that's plugged in. See, I'm not plugged into any other monitor. Let's uh, let's see how I dispute a fake copyright claim on YouTube. And if I go to full screen here, how do I do this? This is how you dispute it. I'll show you. You got another one? They've taken revenue from me and this pisses me off. So let's fix it. So it's Saturday morning and I do the same thing I do every Saturday morning when I first turn on my computer. I so on the on one of these breakout cables, you got to use one that's wired like a Sony, which is the this one here. Tip white and um, the red is to ring three. And the uh, yellow goes to ring one, so the ground is this one here. So this is the this is the the wiring for the Raspberry Pi. If you use one of these other adapters like this, it's not going to work. If I plug this other one in that came, I don't know what this came with. It may have come with a, a TV of some type. But if I plug this one in, as you'll see, nothing is going to give me video or sound. You get that. Right? You get a scramble and a bunch of noise because this is the wrong adapter cable. You have to get the right one. If I plug the correct one in. The 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 um, the uh, where is it? It's red, red and white. Not the yellow one. The yellow one doesn't do anything, right? You have to get the right adapter cable. This is one that Sony sold for their camcorders, which is a pretty standard one. All the all the little handy cams and stuff used this type of an adapter, this type of breakout cable. Anyway, that's um, that's how you. Um, that's how you do this. That's how you set up one of these Raspberry Pi threes to operate composite video. So, to recap, you turn on the power. You won't see anything on the screen unless you have a, another monitor that's got um, 
If you've got a monitor that's got um, HDMI, you can wait for it to come up and say hold the shift key to go into recovery mode. But if you don't have an HDMI monitor, you're going to wait about 15 seconds. And then once the once that time is up, hit the shift key and then release it and just hold it for a few seconds. I think I held it for, what, four or five seconds and released it. You give it a chance to load up another submenu, which you're not going to see. And then the, um, the keys to hit, one is to select HDMI, normal mode. Two is to select HDMI in uh, what they call it, protected mode, I think it was. Three is to select PAL, and four is for NTSC. Those are the four settings. So for me to switch this back, now I'll just bail out of this thing here, and uh, we'll just double click here to get out of this, and uh, I'll just close this down. And we're gonna shut this thing down. And I'll take it back to my other, my other TV. Here's another thing to try. If you hold down the shift key when the, the system is booting, so after 15 seconds, hold down the shift key, you'll be able to hit the two, the number two key. And the number two key will select HDMI safe mode. We'll make this a permanent setting. HDMI safe mode. Now we'll exit. Now, watch what happens. If I exit this and shut it down, doing this in one shot so you guys can see that there's I'm not tricking you on anything this is the mode you want to have set so we're gonna let the unit boot up I get the main menu here if I shut it down I'm gonna unplug my HDMI monitor I'm gonna turn the power on It'll now boot up in standard definition through the composite output. So the resolution now in, in HDMI safe mode, the resolution is determined by whether you're connected to HDMI or not. Just takes a few seconds here. There you go, Raspberry Pi desktop. You notice that I did not get the selection menu though. It just went straight into Raspbian because it will go into whatever the last um, operation was. If you were in the um, if you were in the media, what they call it, the Kodi media, it will boot back into the Kodi media. If you are in the Raspbian, uh, it will boot back into Raspbian because it it sends the signal out in HDMI in 640 to that initial screen and then it'll boot up so if you've got if you've got it set up for a dual boot environment you'll need to select option 3 if you're on a PAL TV or option 4 if you're on an NTSC TV and then you'll get that boot up menu or you can plug it into a uh, HDMI monitor if I go back and plug it into the HDMI monitor again. There's nothing on the screen for the TV now. You'll see that initial startup screen. You'll get this, and you'll see the startup screen where I can select. So here's where I've got the option of selecting Raspbian or LibreLec. Liber now we're back into Rasp Raspberry Pi desktop. So that's the options. Option one, always HDMI. Option two, it will select HDMI initially and then go to composite if there's no TV connected. Option three is PAL. Option four is NTSC. That's how you set these things up, simply. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again in the next one real soon.